Welcome everyone to Wrestling Compadre Slamcast right here on Fox Sports. You can find us on social media at Fox Compadres. I am your host, Scott Narver. Hello, how are you? And with me on the horn, we've got Dale Rutledge at The Walking Dale. How are you, Dale? What's up? You can't DC me. I can't. Are you a free agent? I am a free agent as of this very moment. Oh, you lucky son of a gun. Yeah. (laughs) And also in studio, we have returning at Mark Rosecca on Twitter and the man behind Vince Googling, Mark Rosecca. You can see me, Scott. I'm sitting right next to you. I can't. I've gone blind. (laughs) What's wrong? Oh, no. Lana's dancing is too good. Uh, So money in the bank is this Sunday. We have matches all lined up. We're ready for a pay-per-view. It's been hours since the last one. I think we're ready. (laughs) It's pay-per-views every Sunday now, right? Sure, why not? Sure. 52 pay-per-views a year. (laughs) But this one has big stakes. There's a lot on the line. There are two Money in the Bank matches. First, let's tackle the men. Let's tackle all the men. (laughs) Uh, Who do you (laughs) think is going to win the men's Money in the Bank ladder match? I can go over the competitors if you need the info. I was going to do it. Well, yeah, okay. Shinsuke Nakamura. Uh huh. Baron Corbin. Sure. Shinsuke. No, uh, AJ <laughs> Styles. Yep. Sami Zayn. Who? Kevin Owens yep. and AJ Styles. I was going to pick Nakamura, and my prediction was going to be Nakamura wins, mm-hmm. holds on to it, and, ch- and uh, in the meantime, AJ wins the title. And that uh, Nakamura would challenge AJ for the title at WrestleMania, not not in a in a pre planned cash in. He would do like the babyface cash in where they cash in ahead of time and say, "I formally challenge you <laughs> two months from now." Okay. at WrestleMania, that that was going to be my guess. But then Nakamura was standing tall, hanging on for dear life, hanging onto the <laughs> hook at the top of the ladder on the sm- at the end of SmackDown, and I feel like that telegraphs to me that he's not going to win the match. Why? He just did it, Mark. But did you see how he's terrible? Terrified he looked up there, he's never going up there again. <laughs> he was like our truth up there. He did look really scared. <laughs> he was like, What have I got myself into coming WWE? <laughs> I never had to wrestle in any crazy ladder matches in Tokyo. <laughs> we we stayed on the mat. <laughs> so then isn't that crazy? Isn't that crazy that New Japan just recently had their first ladder match? Yeah. Like that kind of blows my mind. It was a year ago as of this Dominion show, I believe, but I don't know how they avoided it for so long. <laughs> it makes sense to me, uh, jumping ahead pre- uh, just a little bit to Dominion. It's because their their tables suck so much over there. I wouldn't trust their ladders. <laughs> hey, they're just keeping it real, man. They're keeping it real. <laughs> that table was legit. <laughs> so Yeah, that, ta- that table didn't sell anybody. <laughs> <laughs> so now you don't believe it'll be Nakamura? No. So who's your pick now? I think Sammy will win, win, and then oh. Vince's music will hit, and he'll come out and just take it from him. <laughs> <laughs> that'll be his cash in. Yeah, this. that'll be his cash in. It'll yeah. be hi, Mr. McMahon. It's nice to finally meet you. Give me that. <laughs> Give me that briefcase. <laughs> All right, Dale. Who are you who are you going with on this one? And when did they cash it in? Oh man, I I gotta think it's Baron Corbin. I feel like he's probably more of a Vince guy. Um, and and he's got some really good momentum, even though he's the one that keeps on getting the losses here against Sammy. Uh, my heart wants Sammy Zayn to win, although <laughs> kind of to Mark's point, I don't know if the people backstage would agree with me. But uh, I I would love for Sammy to to win it and and actually get some some title momentum. But I think it would be Baron Corbin. Although everybody in this match makes sense to me. You you were kind of poking fun of how many pay per views they have, but I am really jazzed for this particular pay per view. Mm-hmm. So. I, I'd be happy with almost any of these guys taking it. Well, of course, it's a SmackDown Live pay per view. They're so good. They are good. They're very good. Uh, of course, Andrew Lynch in the studio, producer Andrew. Who do you think is going to take this one? I think it's going to be Sammy. But just for the sake of argument, given that we've talked about Sammy so much, I think it could be AJ. He might be kind of a dark horse candidate mm. here, which is weird to say because he's so good and he should so consistently be in the title picture. But yeah, I I think to kind of. Piggybacking off of Mark's point, I think it might be something where AJ gets the Money in the Bank briefcase, uses that to capture the title, and then we get to Shinsuke at WrestleMania. Do you mean he'd become 
the case that runs the place. <laughs> I'm not that good, but that's exactly what I mean. <laughs> well, great, Mark. Now that you said that, now I don't believe that's going to happen because you came up with a good catchphrase for him. I am on board with Andrew. I believe it will be AJ Styles, and I believe he will cash it in the very place he had his first ever wrestling match, the Royal Rumble. Because oh. <laughs> <laughs> he never wrestled before that, guys. That's when he debuted for that's all of time. That's true. He was just training for like 21 years. <laughs> <laughs> now, we got to get to uh, the women's Money in the Bank as well. Uh, let's tackle the women. Let's tackle all the women and leave uh, Ellsworth to the side. Don't tackle him. <laughs> you, might, you might get some goo on you. Okay. Who's going to win this? We've got Carmella. We've got Charlotte Flair. We've got Natalia. We've got Becky Lynch. And we have Tamina. Charlotte. Yeah. Well, I'm assuming. Yeah. Gosh, I don't know. That if Naomi stays champion, Charlotte would be the best. Would be a great opponent for her. Okay. But um, man, if if Lana Lana is maybe a dark horse to win this title. I mean, we were saying last week on the show that we thought if they're going to have the match, that Lana probably is going to win the match, or they wouldn't have made that title match. So if Lana wins, I guess I would still pick Charlotte. Sure, baby face Charlotte. So okay. no matter what. I say Charlotte. Sorry, I just had to work it all out here in a really intense moment. Where does Charlotte cash in said money in the bank briefcase? Soon. The next pay-per-view? So two a week from now? Two weeks from now? Okay. <laughs> do you think there's a possibility, throwing this out to everybody, do you think there's a possibility that Lana wins that night and then the challenge is laid down that night and Lana has it? Just for an hour, maybe. Ah. I think they have to have that in the back, like in the back pocket, because oh. if Lana like isn't good in the ring, but they mm-hmm. book her to win the title, I think it'd be good to have that, like I said, that audible to be like, okay, let's let's maybe put this in a d- different direction. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, in which case, I think it might be Becky Lynch. I'm biased, obviously, mm-hmm. uh, but I feel like we haven't gotten a ton from Becky it, with the whole welcoming committee. I really felt like there was going to be maybe a heel turn. Uh, maybe they're continuing to play this out a little bit, which would be great. I think there's going to be a moment between Charlotte and Becky on Sunday, and I think Becky probably gets the upper hand. Okay. And then where's the cash in? Uh, I, I think uh, it would be that night. Okay. I think that's a really good point by you, Scotty. I, I do think that Lana is going to win the title from Naomi, and then I think that they could maybe flip it immediately thereafter. I got to go with Carmella with the help of James Ellsworth, who will be the one carrying around the briefcase oh. up until... The Royal Rumble, where AJ Styles had his very first match, where she cashes it in. What about you, Dale? <laughs> uh, man, do we know what Lana's wrestling finesse is? I mean, we haven't really seen her. I know she's been training. I got to say that that finisher, presumed finisher, that she uh, <laughs> threw down on, on this SmackDown looked pretty decent. Yeah, it did. But, you yeah, know, like, it was just one move, so that yeah, doesn't really... Who knows? That might be the... Her opener and her finisher and all the other moves in between. <laughs> well, I'm sure the response right now is higher than what Eva Marie ever got. So internally, they got to be really happy with that. Yeah, and she's such a strong character that I, I mean, you know, she probably could just get by for a little while mm-hmm. and and still get the title put on her. So I I, I don't know it. It would be good, for, you know, social media wise to have Lana just appear out of nowhere and take that title. Uh, I would think Becky would be the winner. I like the the Carmella idea, especially using Ellsworth as her valet for for the case. Mm-hmm. But uh, I feel like Becky's been kind of just stuck in no man's land where she doesn't really have – she's not overly good as far as, you know, uh, her character, I mean. And, and then she's not part of the welcoming committee, so she's just kind of stuck. So I feel like something like this could really help somebody who should be getting a lot more focus than she is. Uh, get to that next back to that next level i guess i should say okay and where's that cash in deal i would think SummerSlam. i think they want to pull a lot of big things at SummerSlam. so why why hang on to it i mean it's the first one i, I mean i guess they could have it carry on till further but i i, I would think they want to make it feel big okay so might as well might as well pull it out in the next one well, things that were big this week, most definitely, I know two people who are very excited to talk about <laughs> New Japan Pro Wrestling Dominion, Okada, Omega 2. How was this, Mark? Unbelievable. Did it surpass the first? <laughs> ah, man, it's so hard to say. I would say that they are both, both the matches these guys have had so far this year are modern, 
classics for sure. Mm-hmm. Dave Meltzer and Wrestling Observer now now sort of infamously gave the first match at Wrestle Kingdom six stars on the five star rating scale. He <laughs> broke his own scale. <laughs> so what happens if this match is better than that match? Did he give this one seven stars? He hasn't given his rating yet. Oh, we don't we don't yet know at the time of this recording. <laughs> okay, so for yourself, is it higher or lower? Or you're still undecided. You're like Meltzer. You got to go in a cave and think about. I, this I would for say a while. it's big, to me it was the same, exact as good. It's so tough to say. Okay, there the, these matches have both just been in the like stratosphere of phenomenal wrestling matches. It's tough to grade them. Dale, New Japan Pro Wrestling fanatic. Ooh, how was it? I, hot damn! This match was so good, and it is hard to. Its stiffest competition is the other match that they had uh, with each other. So. There is definitely uh, a hard thing to rank, and they pulled out a lot of the same tricks. So you could kind of say maybe the first was better because they kind of set the standard. Uh, but this one, uh, you know, the way that it ended and and the way that it kept going, and to have Cody Rhodes and the Bullet Club come out and they were going to throw the towel in, and the just the added dramatics of that was was just such killer storytelling and. Um, New Japan really knows how to make feuds matter for a really long time. And I, I think this is another prime example, kind of like Tanahashi and Okada um, back in Wrestle Kingdom 9 era, where uh, they continue to tell that story. Um, Okada is just the freaking man, basically, uh, of New Japan anyways right now. And, and maybe across all of wrestling, he's been making everybody look good. This year, but uh, I don't know. It's hard for me to form my own opinion. If Meltzer hasn't given his, what am I to do? <laughs> Meltzer, tell us what to think, Dave. Tell us what to think. <laughs> You're the rotten tomatoes of wrestling. <laughs> what shall we think? <laughs> uh, this match was was really really incredible. Um, they did every single move. Yeah, like I think that's well, what this six, match in sixty minutes you have to do all the moves. That's what this match did. This <laughs> match was what WWE two K seventeen. In order to get a five star rating, you have to do all the moves in your repertoire. That's what this <laughs> match did in order to earn <laughs> that rating. Uh it was incredible. Spoiler alert, if you haven't seen it everybody, uh you know, pause this right now. Go give us a five star rating and review on iTunes. Then come back here after you watch the match. Went to a sixty minute draw yeah um and no winner just beat up beat up losers really the the fans were the winners oh i see (laughs) when now we were talking about this a little bit earlier when was the last time we've had a 60 minute draw in recent wrestling history i mean i think the most famous example where the ricky steamboat there was one in the Ricky Steamboat Ric Flair feud, I think, in '89. Mm-hmm. Right? I mean that Shy where they did that three match series, and one of those I think was a sixty minute draw. Mm-hmm. Since then, and there was the the first clash was Flair and uh, and Sting, and that kind of famous match that made Sting a star. But that was a forty five minute draw, right? Uh, but since then, I mean, what has been a big landmark, memorable 60 minute draw match. There, there hasn't been any. I feel like WWE with some of their Iron Man matches, but that feels a little different because they're acknowledging there will be multiple falls in it. Right. This is just a one fall match. Right. So it's 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 really amazing to see what's old is new again. That they pull that out. That they do something that we haven't seen as fans in a long time and probably a whole new generation of fans have never seen anything like that. Where there is no conclusion to it. Right. And Dale, you made some great points before the podcast about what this does for both competitors. Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like the storytelling that you get to to get out of this, too. I mean, they could have, you know, uh, maybe have Kenny Omega win um, the the G4, excuse me, doing Climax and have this continue to Wrestle Kingdom for, for next January. And And I don't think one single fan would mind this going back to the the biggest stage uh, for New Japan, um, and and you know Cody Rhodes kind of on the on the network. Cody Rhodes came out and made a little challenge to Okada for the USA show, but you know I think that's just a temporary derailing um, to give people a breather off of this phenomenalness that happened here, and um, I, I think we'll be back to this sooner than later. Now, has the card been set for the Long Beach shows that it's going to happen in California? What What are the fans going to see there, Mark? 
They just announced it um, right after the Dominion show. They announced it. But like Dale said, the um, uh, Cody, Cody Rhodes, or as he's known in New Japan, Cody, will, <laughs> Cody. <laughs> will, uh, will be wrestling Okada in a, in, uh, in a title match. And then they're, start, they're, doing this, they're creating a new title, the U.S. title. They're creating their own U.S. title. And the U.S. title tournament is going to be starting is going to be starting and ending over those two nights of the Long Beach shows, July 1st and 2nd. So uh, I think Will o- Billy Gunn be in it? Will Billy Gunn, for some bizarre reason, Billy Gunn is wrestling Tanahashi on these Long Beach shows. It's, it's surreal, but it's true. Is he really? Yes. It's yes. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Mr. Ass <laughs> Tanahashi wow. ass. versus Hiroshi Tanahashi in a in a weird uh video game match, I guess. <laughs> and Fire Pro Wrestling. <laughs> um but yeah, I mean the, the so they did these are going to be great shows, you know, mm-hmm. I think that, and I think everybody's going to really come ready and excited and ready to work. And we talked about this some last week. You, you recently did some work with new Japan pro wrestling. I did. Yeah. I worked for new Japan, um, actually, uh, hosting a video that's mm-hmm. going to be up on their, um, on their website and on social media, new Japan, uh, probably this coming week. And it's sort of a primer for these July 1st and 2nd shows. So how big is this for new Japan for those fans that maybe aren't familiar with it or don't, you know, don't really follow the product that what these shows will be in America? Well, I think that new Japan as a company is very, very serious about international expansion. And luckily for us who love the promotion, uh, you know, U S fans here who love the promotion, um, these July 1st and 2nd shows sold out quickly. They both sold out in about two hours. So it was a great sign that there's a there's an appetite for these shows here that U.S. fans want it and want to see it. And um, we're certainly going to see more. I mean, I think New Japan has some plans to aggressively expand into the U.S. the rest of this year and in 2018. Now, Dale, is this why don't, a bummer? Why team? don't you guys? Why don't you guys just fly to Japan? What's the big deal? <laughs> That's what I was gonna say, Dale. That you you're racking up all these miles, and now they're putting it in the backyard over here in California. <laughs> what a bunch of a holes! A <laughs> hole makes... Japan pro wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's really awesome. It it is. You know, I mean, there's there's something to be said about having, uh, you know, a huge Japanese crowd uh, watching a show. With you, it's it's definitely its own experience, regardless of who's wrestling in in the ring. But um, I think it's so great that they get to come and be a bigger part. If they want to actually spread New Japan, uh, yeah, I, I kind of have a feeling that it'll stick to the West Coast because it's just the amount of miles that you have to put on those guys to to come and perform and and then go back and still support uh, Japan. I think that's going to be pretty taxing or or they're going to grow the league where it's a lot more local talent, um, you know, so it's kind of ROH heavy, which they already have that agreement uh, with the ROH uh, guy. So, you know, I'm, I feel like they could do that. But I think you're going to expect a certain amount of Japanese performers to be inside of a New Japan pro wrestling show. So I don't know. It'll be interesting to see exactly how they finagle uh, this. But I am terribly excited for the opportunity of it. Now, will this be shown on TV, or are these just going to be live shows? The July 1st and 2nd shows? Yeah. They're both going to be um, on Access TV. I think July 1st is live on Access, mm. and I believe the July 2nd show is going to be taped to be played later on Access, and they're both going to be live on New Japan World. Oh, oh Mark, you bring up a good point. Um, Dominion, if anybody didn't get to see it, it will be on Access. Uh, uh, Jim Ross announced it. I think it was like the 30th of June. Uh, Google it, but it will. The, these matches will be turning around pretty quick, so uh, you'll be able to see Dominion sooner than later. Yeah, and it was really great. The main event is obviously solid. If you haven't seen it, and you're a wrestling fan, you know it's great to see these other people around the world doing excellent, excellent matches. But you know what? They're a bunch of idiots because they're signed to contracts. Yeah, bunch of fools is what I say. Yeah. Why not be a free agent like the returning John Cena? On July 4th to SmackDown Live, only because he wants to go to that show, not because he was superstar shook up to that show in a draft. This, I think, is a great new gimmick. I mean, give credit <laughs> credit to John Cena. He's willing to mix it up even later in his career, try a new gimmick, free agent John Cena. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Maybe he's just a free agent of America. Oh. See, I was thinking maybe it's like a Hollywood free agent. 
You know, like he's he's the new Hollywood superstar. So he's just a free agent wherever he wants to go, whatever he wants to do and work, he'll do it. Yeah, I mean, I, I, it's like that be heel turn that we've been waiting for. The Miz, mm-hmm. he's oh. just going to steal the Miz's character for his heel turn. <laughs> we'll get to see him. I mean, just think, guys, we'll get to see him on SmackDown. We'll get to see him on Raw. We'll get to see him on NXT. We'll get to see him on Two Hundred Five Live. We'll get to see him on the new British show. I mean, he's a free agent, guys. Table for one, <laughs> John Cena, and he'll bring it to that table. All the table shows on the WWE Network will be John Cena. Free agent shows. Impact Wrestling John Cena, <laughs> ROH John Cena, PWG John Cena. Yeah. He'll be CM Punk. He'll be what Punk wanted to be. That's right. You know? Really, he's independent contractor John Cena. <laughs> <laughs> what do we think is in store on July 4th with this free agent John Cena? Fireworks. <laughs> Barbecue. Red, white, and blue. Uh huh. Is Jinder Mahal going to be in trouble? Is this going to be on that very night we're going to see John Cena challenge Jinder Mahal for the title? Is it? Is it going to be something else? Is it? He's going to say that he is going to Raw. What do we see John Cena say on this very show? I think he does challenge. I think Jinder wins at Money in the Bank, keeps the title. Okay. Cena does challenge on the July Fourth, doesn't win, but gets screwed over by whoever his SummerSlam opponent is going to end up being. The Singh Brothers. Yeah, maybe, <laughs> or just the Singh Brothers. <laughs> what do you think, Dale? Uh, I don't know. It's it's hard because they they try to do this counter programming for holidays when they have the misfortune of of having because a lot of you know. Holidays end up being on Monday, so they do this kind of weird stuff uh, generally over there. But I, I don't know. Do you, do you really put a high caliber match like that on on the show, or do you just have them show up and that be the pop? Because they're go- they know they're going to get lower ratings that day because everybody's going to be out celebrating, having hot dogs. But I don't know. Do you do you want to have something big like that? I think if you do, yeah, you have something where it has a dusty finish type of ordeal. And and then you get a rematch of the same thing at a at a bigger stage, but I don't know. I don't know that it really matters because I don't think a lot of people are going to be watching. I remember many moons ago, it was a it was a Edge and Hulk Hogan mm. won the SmackDown Tag Team Championships on a July Fourth as well. I believe it was against the Un Americans. Who who were the Un Americans? Test, Lance Storm, and Christian. Sure. <laughs> what is Test Canadian? Well, he was. <laughs> I don't know if you can still count him as Canadian. Oh, I didn't realize that. Um, but I don't know. I think it could be something like this. It's such a it's such weird verbiage to it. It strikes me as very odd with the superstars on each branded show that somehow Daniel Bryan and Shane McMahon managed to let the biggest one slip through their fingers. <laughs> they are and lousy at running this. <laughs> And why did no one mention it? Like, everybody's like, oh, wow, John Cena. And, like, nobody made it seem weird that it said free agent above his name, like, as to what it would mean or why they would put that there. Like, seems like it would be something that would be a talking point if you're going to bother to have it on the screen. <laughs> yeah, like, he's too big. He can't be branded to one show. Right. But right. I, I don't know. I'm I'm very confused by this, but I am intrigued by it. But that's not the well. Only. It's interesting if it's if 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 it's the. Uh, I wonder if yeah. this is going to be the beginning of the breakdown of the brand split. They've done an awesome job protecting the brand split so sure. far this time around. Yes. since they split it, as opposed to last time when it got it kind of everybody got sloppy was really quickly. But this is the first indication that they might be willing to let there be some flex flexibility there. So we'll see. Mm. Okay. And maybe for a guy that's like Cena, where they know he actually is is a big draw, that they are willing to have him be the person to break it. Who's right. a bigger draw than Jinder Mahal? <laughs> <laughs> Free agent in America Heath or in India? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sure it'll be a big, big thing. But even bigger than that is another announcement to be made next week on Raw. There, there's a lot of things just looming with these big superstars they have. Roman Reigns is going to make his SummerSlam announcement. <laughs> it's so weird. I love, I love that Dale's reaction is to laugh, because that is the appropriate reaction. <laughs> Do you think he's, he's getting engaged, guys? What's going to happen? To Vince McMahon. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's time for another... going out for a while, as far as I know. It's time for another SummerSlam wedding. It's been too long, guys. <laughs> He'll cock that fist, and then there'll be a ring on it. <laughs> 
<laughs> that would explain the uh, planning this far in advance, totally skipping the fact that there's a pay-per-view a month from now. <laughs> Vince tears his quad while walking down the aisle. <laughs> Ow. <laughs> yeah, we have Great Balls of Fire coming up. And then what's the other one in between that one? There's another one in between? Isn't there? I don't, I there, don't know that there I, is. There was a rumor that they were adding one, but I don't know that that is officially happening. Oh, I believe it. Oh, Lordy. It's, It'll um, be Roman Reigns' announcement pay-per-view. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, but they did sort of present it on Raw as if, yeah, every year around this time, Roman Reigns makes his SummerSlam announcement. <laughs> you know, like, oh, it'll be next week? Oh, oh, good. Oh, good. Uh, oh, like the Slammies. <laughs> He's just going to declare something. Yeah, you know, I, we're in the, you know, in June, July, everyone makes their SummerSlam announcement. <laughs> it's the state of the Roman Empire, yes. and no one wants to watch. <laughs> well, so, obviously, it would be completely unfair if he were to announce that he wants to challenge for the Universal Championship. Because we just came off the heels of Extreme Rules to have a five-way match of competitors to determine a number one contendership. Right. I mean, all those people could, should have just said beforehand, like, oh, I would like to challenge at Great Balls of Fire. I'm making my Great Balls of Fire announcement. <laughs> what if he announces that he's finally going to turn heel at SummerSlam? <laughs> <laughs> that could be. Dale, what, what do you think this could possibly be? Oh, man. I really, these are way better guesses than I think what <laughs> is actually going to happen. Um, I don't know. What, what, I mean, that's the only thing he could be saying unless he, I don't, I don't know. Has he found something out about Braun that he wants to share with the world? Like, I don't see what they could possibly, it's got to be who he's going to face at SummerSlam, I guess. But why now? Why would you underscore the fact that Joe and Brock just had this awesome, uh, uh, you know, beat down in the middle of the ring up the ramp. Like I loved everything that they're doing with those two guys. And then to have Roman try and like usurp that. I don't, I don't know. I don't get it. What if he announces mm -hmm. that they're going to reform the shield, but they're all going to wear those bear costumes that Ambrose has. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. <laughs> I, I think he's going to come out there and he's going to say, look, everybody, I realize why you're mad now. I retired the Undertaker. Yeah. I don't want to be that guy. I want to be the Undertaker's tag team partner at SummerSlam. Wow, that'd be nice of him. And then he'll be an uber face. Everybody will love Everybody him. Everybody would love him. Mm -hmm. What if he comes out in Undertaker's hat and jacket <laughs> and he announces Undertaker left this stuff at WrestleMania? <laughs> That's mine now. <laughs> I'm, I'm wearing it now. <laughs> Man, that would, if he actually did steal the Undertaker gimmick, that that would be the best heat that he could have. Yeah, it really would be. Get. Along with his armor and everything, like he's just going to acquire more wrestlers' clothing <laughs> as he retires them and puts them away. And he's going to say, "Look, Kane isn't around either. I'm taking that too." Yeah, right. <laughs> but Dale, like you had mentioned, uh, Raw this past week was pretty spectacular. What a hell of an opening to Raw! With Samoa Joe and Brock Lesnar, we got the showdown, and this was everything that I wanted out of these two. Mm. Like, Joe and Brock went toe-to-toe, -to -toe, and there was a moment, Mark, you had talked about it last week, that, you know, Brock tends to bleed in all of these segments. Accidentally. Just, accidentally. Accidentally. And boy, if, if Joe wasn't accidentally trying to kick him right in the nose to make more blood, <laughs> I don't know what makes Brock more mad, when he bleeds or if he doesn't bleed. <laughs> Because he seemed pretty mad that he was not bleeding from the nose. But, you know, the the the, the skirmish between The Undertaker and, and uh, Brock Lesnar was an epic one that we had, you know, about a year, year or two ago, where the entire roster had to pull them apart. But this was a brawl. Like, this felt more real than that did. What were your guys' thoughts on this, Mark? Yeah, no, I agree. I think it was... I think it was uh... It felt old school in that sense. It felt old school in that sense. And hopefully, to your other point, you know, uh, Paul Heyman will never allow Lesnar to get booked in a first blood match. Because <laughs> that'll be quickly over for Lesnar. That'd be a, that'd be a quick loss. Mm -hmm. But I liked it. I, I, I thought the touch of um, Angle bringing out the whole locker room was pretty fun. Yeah. Just security didn't work and then bring out the... The geeks. <laughs> <laughs> Bring me Kalisto. <laughs> if you're in that, if you're in that first round of wrestlers who came running out, you may want to reevaluate your position in the company. <laughs> how, how dare you? Bo Dallas is very secure. <laughs> yeah, that face. I'm like, is that Bray? Who is that? And then yeah. also Kurt Hawkins' outfit. I kept going. 
who the hell is that guy? Yeah. I was like, Curtis Axel still works here. <laughs> <laughs> Dale, did this get you as hyped as you were for the match? Are you more hyped? Where, where's your hype level at? Uh, I am 100% hyped. I think that these two are going to have such a freaking slobber knocker. I, I don't, the nice thing about it is that their, their size and their gruffness are kind of like equal to each other. You know, like they really look like they want to cause damage and that they can cause damage. And I, 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 I feel like there is no love between these guys. So everything about it, they have uh, sold me on completely. And I, I'm definitely ready for this to be the main event. But again, I don't, I don't want something like a Roman Reigns announcement to, loom over top of that because I, I don't want to think past this at the moment. Like I'm very comfortable living in this and, and I, I, I hopefully they don't ruin that by throwing Roman in at ringside at now or something. I don't know. Who knows? Agreed. Yeah. Uh, I, I love the fact that both of these guys also have an MMA background and you know that they can fight Then you know that they can do submissions, you know, they can do strikes and they've presented all that in different ways. Like, you know, Brock was an active competitor, but you know Joe is trained that way, and it doesn't look fake. It doesn't look like he's just learned a move set that he's trying to pass off. This could be this match has so many potential possibilities. Like this is very reminiscent of the uh, Samoa Joe and Kurt Angle in TNA. Yeah, when you had that showdown and Joe head butted Kurt, and it was on. And this was the same thing. They got in the ring. There was just an amount of time where you, you think something big's going to happen. And Joe headbutted Lesnar, and it was on. I, I'm totally excited for this yeah. match. You know, I thought that too, and then I thought, you know what's weird? Kurt Angle's here right now. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> you know, like, as it was happening, I was like, that's so odd. <laughs> it's like, oh, that could have been me. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, I think... Oh, yeah, go ahead, Dale. I, I was just going to say, speaking of Kurt, we didn't really get a lot more on this backstory of... I mean, I guess they mentioned it just offhandedly about his his personal life or, or whatever, but they didn't really continue that story with Corey Graves and, and Kurt Angle. It seemed like it was kind of back burner for this week. Oh my God. What if that's Roman Reigns announcement? I've been attacking <laughs> big Cass. <laughs> I've been attacking big Cass and the fashion police on behalf of Kurt Angle. <laughs> and that I, drawing, that drawing from Fandango did look a lot like Roman Reigns. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Greasy hair. Yep. Mm -hmm. Two arms. Wears a lot of black. <laughs> mm -hmm. Could be him. There's a lot of mysteries going on right now. We have these mm. mystery announcements. Summer mysteries. <laughs> Summer mysteries. <laughs> and we have, uh, you know, all this all this intrigue of, uh, you know, mm. what, what all this is going to be. We have these mystery attackers on mm. both shows. Is this good? Uh, is this what we want right now? Do we want all these these hanging mysteries? It's good if they know where they're going and the stories pay off. <laughs> What's Dale? What do you think the chances are that all of these pay off? You ask a lot. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I, yeah, that's the thing. I, I love a good mystery. Um, you know, we we're, we're tuning in every week, anyways. I'd love to have things unanswered, but uh, yeah, it, it it would be nice if they know where they're going. But you know, a lot of times they can't because of injuries and stuff one mystery to me that uh, i'm not happy about is why the hell finn balor is yet again not on television um they they had a nice little package for him to say how amazing he is so amazing that he's not going to be doing very much <laughs> over the course of the next month i guess well maybe he should make a SummerSlam announcement mm-hmm <laughs> He should make a Survivor Series announcement. It's yeah. never too soon. <laughs> <laughs> That's very true. Maybe the Balor Club can finally come together in a Survivor Series match. Yeah, that would be great if they could finally do that. That would be great, actually. <laughs> it never seems to happen. Uh, but something that did happen this past week, which was very, very monumental, was for the first time ever, a North American wrestling company filmed a wrestling show in Mumbai, India. Impact Wrestling was in Mumbai, India this last week. They've they've shown the first set of tapings there, uh, and it was it was really extraordinary. It was really cool to see. They had recreated the Impact Zone, um, and they had fans there. A lot of young, rabid, enthusiastic fans uh, that they got plenty of camera shots of in the crowd, and they were just. Totally into it. They they went crazy for Sanjay Dutt, who had spoke to them in their in their language, 
and there was a lot of call and response between them, which was super fun. And Moose and Lashley put on a hell of a world championship match. It was a really cool show to see, and they've got more tapings coming up. And uh, it was really cool to see all the the behind the scenes vignettes too. That showed Mahabali Shira and his family. His that his brother was an athlete uh, in cricket, and he hadn't seen wrestling before. And his father, who had never seen wrestling before either, and bringing them to the show and seeing fans interact with everybody it was just really cool to see this this new thing happening. Did they have a Punjabi prison match? <laughs> They're saving that, I think, Mark, till later in the tapings. They'd be dumb not to. <laughs> it's sort of fascinating to watch watch the entire wrestling industry um, as a business like Target India right now, right? right? Like it's like the whole industry just went India. India is the next thing, and Impact's going there, and good for them. I mean, to tape the show in India that is a, that's a pretty amazing accomplishment. It's, it's a, very cool. It's a big deal, and of course WWE with Jinder and all that stuff is about targeting India, and you know who's missing out on this great Kali. Get back. Now's your moment, Kali. This is it. Do a run in <laughs> or a stumble in. <laughs> that is more accurate. Is it isn't he teaching at a wrestling school or something? That's what I had read last. Uh promo class. He's teaching promos. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Everyone graduates whether they talk or not. <laughs> uh, I'm really excited to see what comes up. I'm hoping. I don't know. I haven't read all the spoilers of what's gonna happen in India. I just hope they put Scott Steiner on a plane. And got him to Mumbai, and he will be out there at some point <laughs> during these Impact Wrestling shows. He's got to be. He's got to yeah. be. But I don't know. <clears throat> it is interesting that it, it did, uh, you know, the word is definitely out on India. But, I mean, the, the numbers that we saw that India was pulling in for, like, their Raw, I mean, they created, like, a, um, I don't know what you would call it, but, like, their own panel of people to discuss wrestling pre slash post wrestling that they air, you know, on, on TV there as well. I mean, it, it's getting huge, huge numbers. I can't recall the actual numbers at the moment, but it, it's pulling in viewership that bigger than, than most other sports in India. So wow. obviously uh, you, they should be capitalizing, but it's, it's crazy. It's, it is nice to see somewhere just really take to wrestling. And I, I, I would love to go out there and just see what that crowd is like. So you heard it here first. Dale's going to fly out to India for every show now. <laughs> as soon as they, a WWE has an India tournament, I'm there. <laughs> <laughs> it could happen. At this rate, it definitely could happen. <clears throat> yeah, it's between them and China, right? I feel like one of those two are the, the next spot. I mean, they hired like eight or ten Chinese wrestlers not just a few months ago. Very true. Well, uh, in other news, the eater of worlds, the man who's got the whole world in his hands, uh, is... Uh, under a little bit of duress right now. There's uh, there's some stuff going on. Him and JoJo, Bray Wyatt, I should say Bray Wyatt and JoJo, so no one gets this confused with Fandango. Bray Wyatt and JoJo uh, have been reportedly uh, together, and Bray is married and reportedly having a divorce. But this brings up a discussion that we had a little bit off air, is uh, when you find out about wrestlers' personal affairs or you know who their relationships are, <laughs> Uh, with other people in the industry or not, does this affect how you feel about wrestlers, like their on-screen characters, um, when you hear about stuff like this? Like, so Bray Wyatt being with JoJo, does this affect it? John Cena having a personal relationship with Nikki Bella, or just other things involved? Does does this change Dale how you think about these wrestlers? I mean, it it has to. Whether you want it to or not, it has to, like, seep into your psyche a little bit. I mean, I would say for, like, the Bellas, I I found them infinitely more interesting when I learned, you know, way back when they were were with Daniel Bryan and John Cena. Just just the oddity of Daniel Bryan and John Cena hanging out together was weird at that point in time. Mm -hmm. And uh, then, you know, things like total divas and all that made made all of that way more interesting for me and i ended up liking the bellas a lot more because of it yeah i mean when it's things like this though i mean it's it's not something that i would i try not to think too much i really don't read too much of the the personal scoop i don't really like to know a lot of gossipy stuff because of that reason because i like to know just what they want me to know so that i can base my opinion off of what happens on tv rather than off um but it's hard not to think about that when it is two people that are, you know, both. I mean, JoJo is not a huge part of of uh, Raw, but she is on there every single week, so it definitely would make you think about it. I don't. I don't know. It, 
it's hard because you don't know what exactly is going on in Bray's life or his marriage. So to pass judgment on it feels kind of harsh on, on my end. Yeah, you, you hope that it's a good thing for all involved. I mean, I'm sure it's not great for Bray's wife, but if it, you know, if it gets everybody to a new place where they want to be, that's yeah. for the best. Like, I'm thinking back to when Hogan Knows Best came on the air mm. um, and how excited I was initially for that show and then seeing what I'm sure what it was for Ozzy Osbourne fans where they're like, oh, man, I could see Ozzy all the time. Oh, he's sad, old, and weird. <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't want to see this. The the uh. iconic wrestling superstar that you got such little access to, you now see with him and his family and him shuffling around and having to take a dump and trying to you know get in his workout for the day. And you're like, this is not the Hulk Hogan I want to see. Like, this has exposed him too much. Yeah. I feel bad for Bray having to seduce a lady in that house of horrors. <laughs> That's a tough sell. Come back to my place, and there's baby doll arms hanging from the ceiling. It's tough to romance anyone in that scenario. I'd get you a drink, but my refrigerator <laughs> fell over. <laughs> but um, you know what? You know what? It, I, I'm thinking of as we're talking about this is the Edge and Lita and Matt Hardy love oh, triangle, oh, right? That is so because true. In that case. That was interesting because I think a lot of wrestling fans took that, for whatever reasons, took that personally, hated Edge for it, totally baby-faced Matt Hardy for it, and everyone, and then WWE sort of gave in to that thing that was happening organically and mm-hmm. and, and made a, a storylines out of it, mm-hmm. um, and uh, so it really took on a, a life of its own in that case. I still have a friend to this day that says he hates Edge because he broke the bro code. And right. from all that whole story, like, hates the man personally, just hates him. Yeah. I would say on the flip side, I um, I think it's – I do admire, for example, John Cena for the amount of time that he puts in outside of wrestling mm-hmm. doing Make-A-Wish and stuff like that, right? Like – uh or there was a clip um, last week, and I mean, I know it was an orchestrated public relations sort of event, but there was a, a viral clip last week of Bobby Roode meeting with a young girl who w- was a survivor of the Manchester attack because uh-huh. uh, they were supposed to have an X- NXT show there and it got canceled. But instead, he met with this little girl's arm was in a sling and gave her a special NXT belt. And I thought, you know, that's pretty darn cool. I thought that was pretty great. You know, even though it's, yeah, I mean, I get there's a PR element to it. I mean, maybe I'm just a sucker for it. Maybe it just works on me, right? Right. But, like, I I, I think highly of those guys when they take the time to do that stuff. True. And even uh, Stephanie McMahon does so much stuff that she doesn't have to. She's in a position where she works for the company and doing all these other roles. She doesn't have to be there and do these things. We saw tonight on SmackDown Live that there are these... Uh, these events that she's going to and doing these charity things and the be a stars and talking to kids yeah. that she puts out that time as well. Yeah. And we, you know, we, we know from, from knowing some of these guys, this WWE guys, like a lot of them are doing stuff like they're going to the, they're stopping by children's hospitals. They're stopping by schools. They're doing a lot of that stuff that is not on TV that it does not get publicized. We don't know about it. Right. They're taking time out of their life to do that stuff. And I think that's, I think that is really admirable. Yeah, I guess it goes both ways. It, it really can affect, you know, the good feelings and bad of how you feel about wrestlers. And, uh, well, maybe now JoJo has more fans. <laughs> I don't know who's to say. <laughs> but we got so much coming up. We got great balls of fire around the corner. We got Money in the Bank looming in our laps. And we've got more impact in India throughout the next month with Slammiversary Hot on the Heels. And New Japan Pro Wrestling is going to be in California can't believe it any moment now <laughs> so mark rosecco where can they follow you what's going on oh i guess you can link to all my social media at my website it's mark warzeka.com m-a-r-c-w-a-r-z-e-c-h-a oh you got a website now com. huh i do mm, vip access <laughs> uh how much will you pay <laughs> three bucks 9.99 a month oh yes same price as wwe network <laughs> And it's worth every penny. (laughs) You can read my bio over and over again. What? You got a bio? (laughs) That sounds like a good deal. Uh, Andrew Lynch. I am at Andrew Lynch on Twitter. And if you are in the Southern California area and planning to go to Raw this month at Staples Center, you can probably find me somewhere behind the crane picking up all the action. Um, I'm going to be the big redheaded guy probably holding a belt. So come find me and tell me why I'm wrong about everything. (laughs) Dale Rutledge. Gladly. 
Uh, I am at the walking Dale on Instagram and Twitter. You can, uh, also find me, um, head down. Well, I think DDP, uh, and I are going to be doing shooting some stuff for the uh, 4th of July. Um, and there's going to be some classes that are there. If anybody's in Atlanta, um, there's some classes that you can join where DDP will be teaching and I'll be there filming and lots of fun will be had. So, uh, look it up. Give us a shout. Free agent DDP. <laughs> Free agent DDB, if you can believe it, he could show up on whatever show he wants. That's amazing. Uh, of course, Giant LaQuasto at Jay Quasto, I think he's out working the cruise ships right now, so he's hard working. So follow him on social media there. And of course, Fox Compadres for all of our social media and me at Scott Narver. And you can check out youtube.com slash on your mark show, the season finale, the biggest episode ever with Matt Morgan. It's uh, pretty great, and some crazy things happen to Skeeter Skyflyer, so you want to check that out. And so for all of us, we thank you for listening. And uh, for Mark Rozeka, Dale Rutledge, I'm Scott Never. Enjoy your wrestling, kids! <laughs>